everyone welcome to the postseason interview with the coach of the everglade entes who's row dab first and foremost how are you doing today my man how are you feeling i know you might not be feeling too great right now but uh hopefully everything else has been going well <laughs> How's it going, everyone? Pooster Road Dab back again. Um, yeah, a uh, little bit under the weather today, but it's okay. Um, I'm ready. I'm ready, and I'm excited to talk about some Pokemans. So, if you guys remember the preseason interviews, this format is going to be similar to a certain degree, but Foose actually used the perfect word when we were talking before. This is going to be a lot of reflection, uh, just talking about the last season, how it went, how he's feeling, and all that good stuff. It's kind of funny, by the way, that uh, the first postseason interview I actually recorded was with you, or the first preseason interview was <laughs> yeah. with you, and now the first postseason one is also with you. <laughs> so, full circle. Um, I'm a go-getter. But... I like to be first. <laughs> 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 clearly um all right but to get into this season to get right into it with the first season done and wrapped up was the was the elite battle league more or less what you expected to expected it to be um i i didn't i didn't know what i was expecting it to be because uh it was my first draft tournament uh taking part in it but i mm -hmm. will say it was a lot more fun than i expected it to be mm -hmm. i knew that you know i knew it was gonna be a lot of fun um, when I was, you know, asked to be a part of it, I was like, oh, okay, that sounds awesome. And little did I know, from the from the moment we started drafting to like the moment we started actually battling and stuff like that, it was just a boatload of fun. Like mm -hmm. I don't know what I was expecting going into it, but I knew that get, uh, having all those incredible moments and uh, getting super hyped up for battles and you know, thinking about everything before and after. It was, it was more fun than I could possibly imagine. So I, I, I don't know if that answers your question or not, but I would say that it's probably um, better than what I was expecting it to be. Um, and I don't really know what I was expecting it to be because I never have done anything right. quite like this before. So <laughs> right. I, I get it. Yeah. It's, uh, so with that being said, did some things maybe surprise you or... I, we didn't really say, you said you didn't, or didn't really know what you were expecting, but did you know like kind of exactly what you were signing up for? Or did, did some things like really surprise you as the season went on? Um, I didn't know how the draft would work. Uh, I was worried. Um, and like my choices with the draft were a little bit like um, unexpected because mm -hmm. uh, how I thought it was going to work with the draft was it was going to go, we were going to go down the line and everyone was going to pick their nine Pokemon. I didn't know it was mm -hmm. going to be like a one at a time thing. So right. I was like, oh God, I'm not going to get anything that I want because every, <laughs> everyone in front of me is just going to pick all nine of their favorites, you know? And I was like, oh God, they're all going to pick all these. And I'm like, dang it. So whenever it was like, okay, we're only picking one at a time. Okay, this is interesting. Uh, so I, that really kind of like, I knew uh, that's a better way of doing it. Like instead of the, what I was thinking, I was like, okay, we're doing all nine at once. Um, but no, that's not a, at all. I don't know why I was thinking that, but that's not at all what we were doing. <laughs> right. So that surprised me a little bit. Um, and then I would say probably like, um, I don't know the, uh, the kill death, uh, mm -hmm. not just the, uh, not just the number of wins and losses. That was very surprising to me too. Um, mm -hmm. and I still don't fully understand how that works. <laughs> if I'm being quite honest, <laughs> um, I know it has something to do with like, you know, your, the number of kills and deaths that you receive, obviously tallying to a total score, but I still yeah. don't understand like how that all works. And I'm glad that stone's doing it because I really, really don't understand it. <laughs> and I'm just kind of rolling with it. And I'm like, okay, that's my number. I'm, I'm, I'm rocking with that. <laughs> uh, so looking back on the season, uh, you know, again, reflecting, mm -hmm. uh, would you have approached the season differently in any way? For example, the way you, you drafted your mods or just like your sort of general approach to matches, your general like preparation for matches. Uh, would you have approached the season differently in any way? I think the first thing that I would have approached it differently would probably be, um, you'll see this in season two. I'm going to balance my draft a little bit more. I had, I went with a lot of bulk this time cause I, you know, I'm, I played more <laughs> defensively, not right. knowing what to expect and not knowing how to react. Um, and I think that ended up, you know, in the end, um, the long game part of it ended up being difficult. Um, yeah. so I mean, second guessing myself and, uh, you know, kind of just getting lost in my own head rather than trusting my gut instinct. And usually the gut instinct is right. Um, you know, I should just go with that first initial feeling rather than overthinking it. So uh, my draft picks probably will be more balanced. And then my my actions in season two will probably be more, okay, 
I know how to react to this. I'm just gonna do it, my initial reaction, rather than sitting here and thinking about it and potentially going to timer, you know? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Um, just making decisions. Right, yeah. So I, I could definitely, uh, I feel that, because <laughs> I probably <laughs> will end up uh, suffering from that as well. Um, <laughs> but uh, again, still looking at your regular season, uh, or the just the regular season itself uh obviously the one and four record probably was not ideal <laughs> but no <laughs> but 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 i will say that even when you even the matches you lost you still were very much in those matches uh usually it came down to i mean one two little mistakes that turned out to be big mistakes um yeah. But regardless, I think you only lost one of those matches by more than two. And even then it was three, so it really wasn't like terrible. Um, a lot of the matches again for you were close. Uh, but what were your thoughts on your regular season? So just the, the first five weeks, um, what were your thoughts about all, how, how that went? Well, I think first and foremost, um, uh, I was intimidated with having to face Crobat's very first, um, <laughs> right. the very first match, and that set me in a slump, I would probably say, because I'm like, oh, okay, I'm facing off against potentially the biggest threat in this league going into it. That's what we were all, you know, anticipating. <laughs> so yep. I was at a kind of like a starting out in the mud, you know what I mean? So that slow start on top of being a bulky team, not super fast. Um, we got some heavy hitters and everything like that, and we had some really good moments. But um, I don't know, we started in the mud, you know, and that yep. was like the biggest, uh, the like deterring part of the entire season i think and then like you said you know a couple of mistakes ended up being game changing mistakes like for example when i'm facing uh, when i was facing gonako in the um in the uh main series uh main season um you know forgetting that weavile is a dark type that is a huge mistake <laughs> you know, <laughs> right, right, right. You know yeah. in the moment you, in the moment you can't really process um every bit of information that you know um because like uh, you go back and you watch any of my things and i'm like sweating and nervous and shaking because i you know it's it's a like a like it's fun but it's also very tense you know mm -hmm. um and i think that's something that you're gonna uh, you joining us in season two is gonna be something that you're gonna definitely feel that that especially for that first match you're gonna be like oh my god <laughs> what is happening right now <laughs> um i think that um I think that's probably the biggest thing is that getting started and facing off against the person that I was most intimidated by um, left me in like a pattern to go into a downward spiral, spiral if that makes sense. And right. I didn't really have the speed in the team to, um, you know, make up for that difference and getting lost and behind and stuff like that maybe right. you know if i would have incorporated a pokemon with trick room maybe it would have been a little bit different but i mean looking back on it it is what it is you know yeah uh it's interesting because that first match against Crobats, again a lot of your losses were very very close and that one was the definition of very very close it was a chess match it was it was a last second kill as well that won the match um yeah. uh so I would think that that did that in any way kind of calm the nerves in some ways or did like after that match did you feel more nervous heading into the rest of the season or did that match kind of calm your nerves like yeah I might have lost the Crobats but it was really really close so did that help with confidence at all heading in later into the season? Yeah, I think so, because uh, like I said, he was the one I was most worried about um, and uh, you know it. it it set up the trend that you know the Everglade Entes were are going to play very very well, um, but they you know like you're not going to be able to keep that momentum going, um, right. which is you know um, something that I was thinking about a lot. You know, like you said, it it, it really was a chess match. You know, the same thing with my uh, uh, my match against uh, um, Gamer, the Detroit Lux Rays. They were both. They were both chess matches. We uh, like we were both going at it toe to toe, and you know, you take you take the right piece in a chess match, and then the 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 tide of the battle shifts. You know, right. all it takes is that one that one choice, that one critical decision, that ultimately ends up changing the rest of the outcome of the battle. And I think that definitely, when I was facing off against Crobats. Um, that definitely set the tone for the rest of my season. That I felt like. 
regardless if I was going to win anything, that the matches were going to be close no matter what, win or lose. You know, there wasn't going to be like any moment where it was just like a complete one sided victory. You know, there's going to be moments right. on both sides. Right. And that's pretty much exactly what happened in all your yeah. matches. All very, very close. So. Uh, with that being said, with the regular season, were you more or less satisfied with how your, with how your regular season went, uh, looking back on those five matches? I mean, I, I like it, it had its moments. Like I said, um, there were moments where I thought that like I had I had like done better than I thought I would do, and then there were moments that I was like, okay, well, this is com completely wrong, and this is a game changer. Um, mm. You know, I felt like uh, I felt like uh, you know it. it <laughs> At the very, at the very least, you know, um, re regardless of how the outcome went, like they were all entertaining and they were all like really, really fun to take part in, mm -hmm. um, you know. And I, I feel like everyone keeping on their toes. I mean, because for example, like whenever I faced off against Stone, um, you know, that match was incredibly different paced than um, after getting that burn off of, on that poor, that poor burn moment with Mammoth Swine. That <laughs> yeah. was completely, completely different that change was of pace. That a huge game changer, yeah. Yeah, it really was. I mean, yeah. that was a good, like, shift in the momentum because I'm glad that Landon's joking prediction of me being 5 and 0, or, or is 0 uh, oh. and 5. Um, <laughs> yeah. I'm glad that that didn't end up coming to pass because, I mean, uh, that would have been awful. <laughs> <laughs> if I would have... Ra also, speaking of um, my last match, um, a main series match, um, against uh, Kentucky Kinglers and um, Derek. I mean, I I, I think I would have rather uh, like thinking about it. I would have rather won in the main season and then lost in the in the um, playoff match. If I'm being honest, I would have rather it been around um, like that because um, then that, that would have been like a shift in momentum. Because I mean, it, like you said in the the roundup and everything like that, it was a, a potentially a Cinderella story and whatnot. But I think me personally, I would have rather had a little bit better of a record in the main season and then lost in like the, the playoff matches. Right. Uh, if I could go back and like if anything was different, I think that would probably be what I would want. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so with the with the goals you had set for yourself do you feel that you you managed to live up to any of them you know some of the i'm, I'm sure you had some goals in your mind we talked about in the preseason interview uh do you feel like you lived up to the goals that you tried to set for yourself you know as my first that was my first competitive tournament bracket um i felt like i did well i mean um I don't feel like except for like a couple of like pretty dumb mistakes i don't feel like uh i don't feel like it was like poor playing or anything like that. I think it was fine. Um, I think I, you know, was able to, you know, with the, the, the hand that I chose and the hand that was, you know, dealt and everything like that, I felt like I was able to successfully utilize uh, bulk city as much as possible. I mean, it may have not gotten the win, but uh, I definitely made everyone sweat a little bit, at least a little <laughs> bit. Um, Cause they're like, oh God, okay, well this is, this is a monster. Um, you know, <laughs> um, and I think, I think, you know, going past the, the main season, going into the playoffs, I feel like, I feel like, uh, the, per the, the Pokemon that I brought the least and thought would be like, I thought I, at the beginning, the first po Pokemon I ended up drafting was uh, Rillaboom. Um, mm -hmm. but it was the Pokemon I used the least in the main se uh, main season. But I felt like that match against Derek was like. Rillaboom's like shining moment, you know. He <laughs> really was, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, my whole purpose for bringing him in that moment was to, you know, get some priority so I can get rid of Mimikyu's disguise, you know. Right. Um, but it ended up doing so much more. I thought it was going to be alive for a single turn, and it ended up being alive for like ninety percent of the match. And I was like, this is insane. I, I was not expecting this. <laughs> right. <laughs> I think so, that was probably the craziest thing. Continue, sorry. <laughs> no, it's okay. Um. So you talked about Rillaboom, you talked about some team members you might not have mm -hmm. used as much. Uh, if you ha if you could have changed your team in any way, uh, would you have? Would there have been some some different uh, pieces to the puzzle? Yeah, I think um, I think I probably would have added a little bit more um, heavy hitters rather than uh, and fast. You know, I would have probably spaced that out a little bit. I had mm -hmm. like like you like you so eloquently said, bulk city. Um, <laughs> I, I had Bulk City for a while, but you know, if I had the chance to go back and like, like I said, with my drafts in season two, I'm gonna try to balance it out as much as I can. Try to see if I can have a mixture of both, because my thought process in this was okay. 
I need to play defensively because I don't know what other people are going to be doing and I don't know how they're going to be running. I need right. to have enough life in me to be able to live a couple of hits. That was the way I was thinking about it. I was thinking about it very defensively and very passively. If I, um, you know, had the chance to go back, I would probably make it like a more of a mixed spread. Um, sp at least, um, it, it especially, especially defensive mods. I had a lot of specially mm -hmm. defensive mods. I could have made a, a bigger impact had I had a little bit more of an even spread across the board. Um, that's at least what I feel anyway, so. <laughs> See, that was one of my concerns, uh, if you remember in the mm -hmm. countless roundups, um, was your team's very much a shield. Um, and my biggest concern was always, can that shield turn into a sword and get those kills when it mattered most? Mm -hmm. um, and for the most part, surprised me because, you know, you, like we keep saying, your matches were very close. You were averaging at like four kills a game, um, something around there. So clearly it was there. It's just uh, typically the shield would get broken before you could fully bring down that sword. Yep. Um, <laughs> So I can definitely understand why you'd want a little bit more balance. Um, still speaking on your team, were you, I mean, did you struggle to adjust to your team? Were you able to, to figure them out pretty quickly or did you take some time before you really fully understood how to utilize them? I feel like, um, I feel like I got in the swing of my team by my match with Guanaco, which was mm -hmm. week two. Um, I wasn't sure exactly how to utilize my team to the best of my abilities. Um, Cause like, for example, my first match when I was facing Crobats, I mean, it probably wouldn't have been in my best interest to bring Rillaboom, but I did. Um, mm. You know, I mean, like it, like, I feel like the, just the way that I utilized my mods could have been just a little bit better of an approach. I should have brought Nido King quicker than I did. Um, you mm. know, he, he definitely ended up being a bigger player yeah. than, um, than I anticipated him being. I mean, I knew, I knew, I knew he was gonna be awesome, but my my thing was, okay, I gotta save him because you know, mm -hmm. um, I don't want to like show all my cards week one. Um, but I mean, I, I don't know. I feel like I could have, I feel like I could have made a um, better choice to get into the flow of the team quicker uh, had I really, really sat down and thought about what I could have done differently. Right. Um, you know, I, I feel like I knew my Pokemon pretty well. Um, my drafts, it, I, there weren't, except for like times where I, I was like, okay, will this outspeed this? Um, I feel like that's just like getting used to the whole, like the whole, you know, Gen 8 meta and everything like that is just mm -hmm. knowing the stats. But I mean, I think, I feel like that's like the biggest weakness of me as a competitive player is I don't know the, I know, I know super effective and stuff like that. And I know like different, moves in different situations and stuff but like weaknesses resistances and you know like stats and um common type uh or i should say common builds of pokemon are things right. that i still don't know it's because i haven't sat down and experienced them all but i've my eyes have been opened a little bit to how people end up training their pokemon and how they end up being different like for example i uh like when i was facing off against um Detroit, the Detroit Luxuries and everything like that. Mm -hmm. I spent so many hours like looking and on showdown building uh, what Max's team would have like you know done if I would have been doing it. So right. I feel like I have a better understanding of those Pokemon because I sat down and I really tried to make it my own and get into my own mindset. You know, right. um, I feel like this is something that's gonna with more seasons and more uh, time spent doing competitive play. I feel like I'm just gonna get better at it. All right. Um, so we spoke on this a little bit, touched on it a little bit. Um, aside maybe from not again, maybe, you know, just that growing experience. Uh, were there any other sort of challenges you struggled with throughout the season? And subsequently, uh, <laughs> were you able to like sort them out if you had any problems? Um, I feel like the biggest problem was the fact that I was slow. Um, but I mean, I don't think that I don't feel like that was like a thing I could have solved. It was um, something I was able to fix in the back-to-back -back matches against Derek. Mm. Um, you know, just picking and choosing the appropriate times to send Pokemon in, and then um, the inappropriate times to uh, retreat. <laughs> you know, uh, switching as much as I did in the very first match. You know, 
ended up biting me in the butt and that chip damage ended up really adding up but at the same time that second match i was switching just as much but i was switching more intelligently if that makes mm -hmm. sense um so i was able to make the same choices but knowing when to make those same choices and right. you, like i said it's a learning process you have to like figure out that little flow of when is the right time to do this and is this maybe a safe bet to do because something crowbats um taught me because we would sit down and we would lab a lot about um the people that i was end up facing um so mm -hmm. i could try to get into the mindset of a person who's done competitive for a long time and ask the questions of how is this going to affect me if i do this choice at this moment and what happens if i don't make this choice are there ways for me to come back if I lose this particular mon at this time? Right. Things like that, you know, just getting into the mindset of how do I do this and how do I, you know, make the appropriate um, choices from that moment, if that makes any sense at all. I don't know. That, no, it's, it just, <laughs> it's just yeah, something it I had to play around with. All right. Uh, and again, it goes back to that sort of experience mm -hmm. thing of just learning as you go on. There's some things you really can't practice until nope. you're in a match so you just gotta experience it exactly yeah it's with a lot of things in life life <laughs> advice for you guys out there <laughs> um, <Honest. laughs> so we're maybe with this were there any uh any sort of problems that you thought you were gonna have um but never actually came to fruition like they were never actually a problem for you off the top of my head i'm not sure um i will say that i was in it i was surprised by how uh, everyone was playing um because i remember at the beginning we were all talking about um remember how derek said he is you know he he was right selling himself short but yeah. he ended up doing fantastic you know what i mean mm. um i feel like everyone was uh in the kind of the same boat we were all surprised by different things um off the top of my head i don't have a direct answer for what you were saying but like mm. i would just say probably you know reacting to different situations um was probably the most interesting thing for me. I, I don't know if there was definitely a, a single moment that I could single out in my mind. Sorry, I don't have a more exciting answer. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. No answer is still an answer. Yeah, uh, I mean, I... <laughs> um, was there anything that maybe you found easier than expected with this season or something that just kind of came easy to you um, as you started to do these battles and matches? Um... I, I would probably say the, the something that was easy for me would be um, staying alive long enough to either make it to timer or to <laughs> or uh, make my, my opponent very frustrated and, and then you know then I ended up losing that momentum you know what I mean so something yeah. that was very easy would be my, my team was bulk city so I mean people were like they uh, they were they were trying they're trying their best to do sweeps and stuff like that but I I didn't get like all like ran completely through you know what i mean right. um I, I was able to do long-term matches and that was super exciting for me i think the shortest match i ended up having was actually up against stone family 64 you know that was yes. the fastest match i ended up having because i mean the whole video my intro and everything i think it was only like 18 minutes or something like that it yeah. was insane <laughs> i mean that was the, that was the fastest match but i feel like something i did really really well was playing that long game you know just like like we said plenty of times before chess match man <laughs> make Absolutely. It a, make, you know it's also good for the watch time too you know have people watch <laughs> that battle for a little bit longer <laughs> true true stick around stick around for all the whole video yeah <laughs> um so focusing just shifting the focus a little bit from the regular season towards mm -hmm. the postseason um you finish up your game five or your match your week five against the kentucky kinglers uh what did your what are your thoughts after your last game that game uh, as you were heading into the playoffs to, again facing the kentucky kinglers uh what were some thoughts you were having in that 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 week leading up to the to the playoffs oh uh, well first and foremost disappointment um but <laughs> i'm just kidding no it was i was having fun um i would probably say that my first my first and most prevalent thought was that I need to make a comeback um, mm -hmm. because um, the the downward slope that we were ended up facing um, was really like messing with the whole like uh, pace, I should say. Mm -hmm. um, I really wanted to make a stronger showing than I did, um, but 
you know, I was like, this is the moment where I can make a huge upset. I was like, mm -hmm. if I change my strategy up a little bit, if I focus on, you know, the heavy hitter of his team and make it my mission to take that thing down, the rest of it, regardless win or lose, will make for, it'll make for an interesting match. Right. My goal was to take down the Mimikyu. Like I said it like four <laughs> or five times in the video alone. I was like, if I take down the Mimikyu, I don't care if I win or lose. Mm -hmm. I've taken down that MVP of that week. I don't care, yeah. you know, like, um, and that, that was the ultimate goal of that match. And then the rest of it just ended up being clockwork because I was worrying about that one thing rather than everything all at once, if that makes sense. And I was thinking more, um, thinking more, uh, towards the end goal of taking down the Mimikyu. And then once the, the rest of his team were at the final stages and I still had plenty of bulk left. I was like, okay, this is good. I can just kind of rock with it and see what happens. So right. I feel like that was probably my biggest thought process going into that second match with Derek is I wanted to make a, make a comeback, you know? And mm. I mean, ultimately at the end of the day, it, that's what ended up happening. I mean, he took down the, the highest seed at that stage. Mm -hmm. uh, so clearly he came up with a nice upset. So you get through, you get through the Kentucky Kinglers in that back-to-back -back rematch, um, where in my opinion, I felt like you had a big, big advantage. Um, being able to study your loss, being able to see what were your mistakes. Um, and it, it didn't really help, or it helped you, it didn't really help the Kinglers that they didn't, I believe the team was exactly the same. It was the exact same, exact yeah. Exact yeah. same, so um, that was big for you. So you get through the Kinglers, you're moving into the semifinals. Uh, against the Miami Dragonites and unfortunately uh, as we know you fell short of the finals um, yeah. What were your your immediate thoughts after after that loss? How, how were you how were you feeling after that? Um, I, it was more of frustration because I was I was so focused like it worked for me with Mimikyu I was so mm -hmm. focused on Cinderace and how I was gonna counter Cinderace that I didn't take into account the rest of his team mm -hmm. Um. I didn't make the same mistake as I did with uh, week two when I was facing him, um, like forgetting that Weavile is a dark type, but I did <laughs> end up forgetting how much of a punch Weavile does end up hacking. Um, and I was more worried about Cinderace than I was anything else, and I was making choices based off of Cinderace alone, when Cinderace didn't even make an appearance in that battle. Yeah. Um, so I, I feel like that was frustration in that moment because I had a like a great strategy for Cinderace. I was able, I w if had I been able to do it, I would have executed it pretty well. Uh, three of my Pokemon were going to be able to, you know, at least get off a of Thunder Wave on it. And once Cinderace's speed is gone, he's not much of a threat. Like you know, that, I think that's uh, that's something after watching a bunch of play with him and watching Guanaco's matches and watching like you know just competitive play in general. Once you eliminate that then you're good to go and i was just so focused and caught up on that one detail that i forgot that he also has a balanced team the rest <laughs> of it is good as well you know right. the weavile was a monster and the rest of his team are, is a monster you know i i the priorities were in the right place but i feel like i was so single-mindedly focused on that one task that my my previous actions against the Mimikyu led me to believe, okay, if I focus so heavily on this task, you know, I'll be okay. But I mean, like we saw, it, it didn't even make an appearance. And, you know, I was so focused on that, that last goal that it didn't even occur to me that, you know, the rest of his team would be, you know, just as good, if not better. <laughs> it didn't right, even need to yeah. bring out his ace. <laughs> yeah, it didn't even make an appearance in the playoffs, by the way. Not at all. <laughs> uh, not at all. <laughs> but I will continue to say that just the thought of Cinderace clearly is enough to throw someone off. Yeah. Um, because <laughs> clearly you had to plan around it. Stone probably had to plan around it. Oh, yeah. Uh, and so just the thought of it being there is cl clearly enough. It doesn't even need to actually hit the field. Um, but you, know, you you finish up you we're done we're here now it's been a uh, a couple weeks since your match um how wh what were some of your thoughts on the elite battle league season one just as a whole in general i felt like it was a lot of fun it, i feel like the um you know uh, matt uh so affectionately refers to us as the original six we're super <laughs> close because of this, I feel like uh, I've made some really, really, really good friends because of it. Um, you know, we're all super supportive of each other. Uh, you know, we're, I, I, I don't, I, it's like a, I, I don't know. We started something really, really cool. And then before this thing even started, people were like, oh, hey, I want to do that. You know, it yeah. was, 
it was such a good idea and mad props, mad props to Stone Family 64 for, you know, commissioning this and doing this and making it as successful that as it is. I mean, the thoughts, my thoughts of as the season as a whole were it was incredibly successful. It was super, super, super hype every moment mm -hmm. of it. Win or lose, like I was having a blast, you know, um, I, there were, I didn't get too hung up on the losses. I wanted to you know i obviously wanted to win but you know it's it was more of oh hey cool i get to go and battle one of these awesome people again you know right and um i'm excited for season two i'm excited to have some new friends joining us um it's gonna be even better as we keep going i feel like mm -hmm. um i feel like it's just overall was a really really good idea and i feel like just the thought of doing it all over again and like us starting the draft here again mm -hmm. soon is like super super exciting i'm i'm interested to see who's going to pick cinderace first <laughs> oh god <laughs> I mean, well, yeah well i mean gonako gonako did end up winning it so i mean um yeah. so he probably is just going to redraft <laughs> he's going first so he's probably oh, going to redraft cinderace. <laughs> and we're going to probably see ace round two but i mean yeah. i feel like i feel like we'll <laughs> We'll all have some time to brush up and know how to defeat it. <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> I, hope, uh, I hope so, anyway. Yeah. Uh, so you spoke, clearly you just spoke a little bit on season two. Uh, yeah. How excited are you uh, being a part of next season? I'm very excited. I think it's going to be great. Um, I think that... Um, I, I've already made up my mind of the, I have about a total of 20 Pokemon that, um, Same. like I have in my <laughs> mind. Yeah. I've already, I've already made strategy. I've already done all that. I'm ready to go. If somebody steals most of my drafts, um, you know, uh, I have backup Pokemon that'll still fit the mold of what I'm trying to do. Right. Um, I've spent time thinking about it and I've spent, um, you know, but there's time where I'm at work and I'm still uh, I'm thinking about freaking Pokemon, you know. <laughs> uh, so I feel like it's gonna be great. Um, I'm putting a lot of thought and effort into it because I want to do a strong showing, and I want to mm -hmm. make sure that I um, can perform to the best of my abilities and make it entertaining for people, and then make it to where they want to keep inviting me back for more seasons. Right. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh I will say that your season one was definitely a strong showing. I feel like if people already didn't take you seriously, they absolutely should now. Um, just your performance this season, just disregard the record. It's irrelevant. Just look at the performances. You know, they, they were they were fantastic uh, every week. Um, Thanks. I'd say maybe except for the Kinglers match, the first one, but uh, you were able to adjust so well in the next match that followed. Mm -hmm. So it, it made up for that. Um, but the final question here, uh, if you could rate this season out of 10, uh, either from a personal level or as a whole, uh, what would you give this season? Like individually, like my performance or like the whole season? Yeah, you as your team, like it, oh, how would you rate um, your season? Yeah, I'd probably say probably maybe a 5.4. I, I would say <laughs> like I could have done so much better. Um, there were definite moments where, um, you know, choices could have been made differently and that i feel like you know personally um close isn't is only good in horseshoes so you know <laughs> season two i'm back with fire y'all you don't even know um I, I like i've learned a lot from comp about competitive play from just this alone and mm -hmm. i'm going to bring the heat next season based off of learning and adapting and changing and um you know, to the best of my ability, I'm going to make the appropriate decisions on how to play to the best of my ability. And these drafts, I feel like uh, once you see my team, um, if I end up getting everything, I hope that nobody's kind of thinking in the same box as me. <laughs> um, I feel like once you see what I have going, um, it'll be quite fearsome. And I'm, I'm hoping that that will be something that is going to make people like take do a double take and be like oh god okay he's serious about this <laughs> <laughs> there's some big words uh from our coach here uh for season two uh with all that out the way i'm i'm super ready to the draft for <laughs> us if you guys for the timetable here the draft for us is tomorrow the 30th mm -hmm. so we're right here <laughs> so i'm very excited as well um uh, but with all that out the way um here's your time to take it away uh 
do your thing your little plugs your channels your everything this is your time right here right now by all means take it away Thanks, man. Well, obviously, <laughs> follow me on my social medias. Check out the Everglade Entes apparel, which I am indeed wearing right now. It looks so amazing. Check it out. Uh, check out all of the uh, my Discord and my YouTube, my Twitch. Um, everything will be animated for you on the screen and in the description, as always. Uh, you know, my tagline on my channel is stay excellent. So, guys, let's absolutely destroy season two. Let's uh, <laughs> you come back with a fiery vengeance. And, you know, let's, as always, have some good sportsmanship and uh, stay excellent. You know, it's going to be great. I'm excited. <laughs> I, you don't understand. I am, too. <laughs> it's going to be great, man. We're going to have so much fun. It's already time for season two. Even though season one yeah. just ended, we're ready. It's time. We're, yeah. <laughs> I, it's been buzzing in our Discord, guys. You don't understand. <laughs> um, <laughs> but that's that for the postseason interview with We Sword Dab, the coach of the Everglade Entes. Best of luck to you. I don't know which way I'm supposed to be facing, but best of luck to you in season <laughs> Thank two. You. Um, and there you have it. Like, like I just said, uh, I hope you all have a fantastic day and we will see you real soon for the start of season two of the Elite Battle League. Take care, everyone. Bye.